Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in and time for today's YouTube video on everything you could possibly want to know or need to know about soft plastic stick baits. And, you know, this is one of my favorite lure categories of all time. Um, you know, the biggest bass I've ever caught in my life was about an 11 and a half pounder at Lake Okeechobee came on one of these. Um, it's a bait that, in my opinion, it's probably, I'm going to guess it's the, it's the ultimate bass lure as far as something that looks natural something that doesn't telegraph itself and if you told me it's like you know Randy, you can have one lure to go you know and you've got to survive you, there's only bass in this particular lake and you've got to catch bass to survive what would it be it would be probably a soft plastic stick bait they catch bass all over the country they catch bass 12 months out of the year doesn't matter how cold it is or how hot it is they'll bite the things but specifically, this time of year and the springtime of the year, they're really effective. And what I want to do is I want to give you guys just a comprehensive breakdown about how I fish these things, colors, rigging, all that type of stuff, from what I've learned from my own experience. The thing that I'm going to show you guys today are things that have caught lots of bass for me, uh, little tr tricks and tips that I've sort of developed on my own over the year, over the years, and I'm going to share that with you guys here. So let's get started in this. Um, first of all, I want to talk about colors a little bit um, because there's a lot of different wide ranging colors. Then I'm going to get into rigging and how I different rig them up differently. Primarily, I've got four different type of colors that I use on all my soft plastic stick baits. You know, I use the Zooms Linky. Uh, you know, Cinco is a good one. Every company out there's got one. But I'm sort of going to go my four colors and let you know when I use them. First of all is the dark colors, like the black and blue. Um, any type of blueberry, black, blue, that type of stuff, a dark colored soft plastic stick bait. This is my choice. There's two different, there are actually several different situations. If I'm fishing water visibility that is like under two foot of visibility, specifically like under 15 inches, and I want to pitch and flip this thing, this is like my first choice that I go to. Um, it's really good. Any darker color like that, it just silhouettes itself a little bit better in darker water. So this is my stain water color. Also, you'll find out about the black and blues. You know, they're really effective on lakes that have grass in it. Doesn't matter if you're on a TV lake, TVA lake, a Texas lake, a Florida lakes, black and blues hard to beat around grass. And also when you have cold water, like that water temperature is under 50 degrees. Even if you've got water that's a little bit cleaner, like over three foot of visibility, I catch a lot of fish on the dark colors, so that's my first color choice. My second color choice is some type of a shad pattern. You know, and this is another Zlinky color. Uh, this is the gunpowder, and it's, there's a lot of different shads. There's baby basses. You've got, you know, sand colors. You've got, you know, shad looking colors with silver. And the, sil the shad patterns that you're going to find out, this is the time of the year they work good. They work really good in the springtime of the year when that water temperature is in the upper 50s to the mid 60s. And I find out for whatever reason that I catch a lot of fish around shallow cover, particularly when I'm wacky rigging this shad thing around the shallow cover. There's something about it. They bite it better for me than they bite the green pumpkins or the watermelons. Um, water visibility, I like a little bit cleaner water with it. So I'm looking for that. Ideally, it's sort of that three to four foot or two and a half to maybe five foot visibility. Um, skipping it and pitching it around on a wacky hit on a, excuse me on a wacky rig around any shallow water cover in the spring really good choice around boat docks I've caught a lot of fish on docks on a shad pattern okay the next one is some type of a brighter chartreuse like this now the times that I use like the oranges the brighter chartreuses some type of a variation away from green pumpkin and watermelon but I still want a natural color is when those fish are feeding on perch. This type of an air, this type of a bait, the chartreuse bottoms or the orange or that type of stuff is my choice during the post spawn because during the post spawn and into early summertime, a lot of bass are feeding on bluegills. You know, the bluegills are starting to spawn, perch are spawning up shallow. And this is another bait that I'll use on a wacky rig a lot around shallow cover. Also, this particular color works pretty good in stained water. While I like the dark black and blue, a lot of times in stained water, 
once that water temperature gets hotter, like above 75, 80 degrees, you can, you'll, I'll get more bites on these brighter colored soft plastic stick baits than I will the black and blues once it gets warmer. Um, in addition to wacky rigging this thing, I'll also Texas rig it at times, pitch it and flip it around any type of shallow cover, that type of stuff. And finally, my fourth one is the bread and butter, just the green pumpkin or watermelon, that type of stuff. You can't go wrong with this. This thing will work in a variety of water clarities, anywhere between 15 inches up to 20 foot of visibility. You know, I wacky rig this, I Texas rig it, I fish it on a shaky head, which I'm gonna show you guys here in a second. This is my workhorse, it's most people's workhorse. Of course, the, the advice I give you guys is take it, take it and rough it up like this. I'm telling you guys, you'll get twice the bites if you do this to all your soft plastic, look at the difference. Look at the difference between the, the front of that bait and the back of that bait when I do that. Huge, huge difference. Huge, huge secret that I didn't share for years. Letting it out of the cat out the bag on it, but that's my uh, setup there. My my workhorse. Okay, let's get into rigging a little bit. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you guys just the Texas rig on it. The hook that I like, I've experimented with every different type of hook you can imagine on a soft plastic stick bait. This is the one that I came up with. It's a Gamagatsu um, G Finesse Worm Hook. Uh, usually I'm using it in a three to four aught size, depending upon if I'm pitching or flipping the bait or casting it. A lot of people use an EWG, guys, but I have found my own personal experience, I lose a lot of fish with an EWG and I don't like the way the bait looks in it. And here's how I rig it, you know, and I'm using it on a variety of sinkers. Like this one right here is just a quarter ounce, but I use it on anywhere from a 16th ounce up to a 5 16th ounce, depending upon the cover or where I'm fishing. And this is the key tip I wanna show you guys with it. So I'm coming through, you know, just an eighth of, eighth of an inch or, or so. And I've showed this tip before, but I, this is for something I wanna show you guys that don't know it. Don't, th this is the thing you don't want to do. Most people take these and they hook it right in the middle like that. And that's, that's how they Texas rig their plastic worms, soft plastic stick baits, whatever. Stop doing this right here, guys, on any of your baits. That You should never do this with a straight shank hook. What you want to do instead is you want to come through the side of it, barely, like this. Got that in the hook in the side. It's completely weedless. You're not going to get hung up. And what happens is when that fish bites this particular, when it bites it in the side, it just pulls it free of that bait, just like that. You don't have any hook to penetrate in the side of the worm. And the, the good thing about this, when you, when you hook it like that, just barely in the side like that, you can use this worm over and over again because you can pull it out and you can come in from a different part of the the worm here, and you can always get a fresh side to put it in. So, this is the this is my a big secret. This is how you want to rig your soft plastic stick baits when you're pitching them and flipping them. Okay, the next setup I'll show you guys is the wacky rig. And you know, if you saw some of my other uh, videos talking about wackies, uh, you've probably seen this before. Um, if you haven't, this will be something new for you. But everybody out there you see uses those O rings for a wacky rig. Um, I've experimented extensively with O-rings. I've used, I've used, I've cut up straws and used them clear straws. I've used the rubber ones. I've mixed different colors. I've used two wacky, two uh, of the O-rings on it. I don't like any of that stuff. The way that I like my wacky rigs is just going right through the middle like that. Just going right through the middle of the bait. The reason I like it like this is number one, it's more realistic. You don't have that O-ring there as a negative strike deterrent. Also, when you have that O-ring in there, your hook is not positioned like that. Your hook is sideways. Your bait doesn't fall as naturally. When you throw it out there like this, your bait falls like this. It wiggles naturally on the way down. When that fish gets it, you've got the hook positioned just perfectly. Now, you'd be surprised. You don't lose that many casts in these because I, when I was using O-rings, I'd have I'd have fish throw the o, throw the worm through the O-ring all the time, and I'd lose a lot of fish on the O-ring. But ever since I started doing this, I, I never lose them. And this is how I rig it: straight shank. And I, I and again, don't use like the kale hooks or the octopus type hooks. Those are fish losing hooks. Go with a straight shank. Again, the Gamagatsu G Finesse. David Dudley's the one that got me on. You know the straight shank hook. This is the hook to use for it anywhere between a one to four aught, depending upon 
size of your bait and size of fish you're after just hook it like that and like i said you'll lose a few worms but what i usually do is i keep an eye on it and i keep coming through a different part of the worm after about every 30 or 40 casts and it stays on great you don't lose any so again my advice is stop texas rigging your baits through the middle and get rid of all those o-rings okay the last one and again, this is something, I'm, there's no doubt you guys are out there saying, it's like, that's ridiculous, Randy. I've used O-rings and I have no problem at all. If you don't have any problems with it, stay with the O-rings. But I'm telling you guys what has worked for me. I've experimented. I, this is what I do for a living. I've experimented with this hundreds of hours on the water. And I catch more bass, I get more bites, hooking it straight through the middle. The last setup I want to show you guys is my soft plastic stick bait on a shaky head. I saw, here's again, this is something that doesn't get fished a lot, but guys, I'm telling you right now, a soft plastic stick bait on a shaky head is deadly. Absolutely deadly. Again, I'm using the Davis head on this. Got a little bit bigger hook. It's got the O'Shaughnessy bend in it. Coming through with, well, first of all, what you want to do since it's thicker here is I bite off a little bit of the, uh, the density of the top of it and that doesn't give me as much uh, plastic as I have to penetrate, come through the top like that and I leave the hook exposed. Even though that hook is exposed, that is surprisingly weedless. I can fish that down about any type of rocky bank. I'll get hung up occasionally, but not bad. But when a fish bites it like that, you got them. You never lose them. I, I really like the soft plastic stick bait on a shaky head this time of year. When those fish are close to spawning, um, you've got a lot of fish up shallow, and especially if you're after a little bit bigger fish, this is a really good rig to use it. And I've been using this for about five years. Actually, a buddy of mine uh, named Rick Johnston back in Joplin got me hooked up on throwing these years ago. Works really good. So anyway, that's the uh, that's the ex about all you need to know right there about soft plastic stick baits. You know, wacky rig them, Texas rig them, you know, shaky head them. Uh, you can stick with four basic colors. You know, you got your dark colors, you know, you got your perch looking colors, you got your shad looking colors, and just the old standby green pumpkin watermelons. That's about all you need. And um, probably the most effective bass lure that there is on the market, this bait and this lure category is gonna stay effective from now on because it, it's subtle, it doesn't telegraph itself, it doesn't give itself away, it's natural. A lot of guys out there like Larry Nixon and John Cox have made a living just fishing the soft plastic stick bait. So anyway, that's the gate today. Today's tip guys. Uh, if you guys are interested in ordering any of this stuff, I'll include the fish in the moment tackle warehouse link in the description here. If you use that, it helps out Johnny and I get a portion of those sales, which helps us uh, uh, stay in business and keep the uh, channel up and running. Appreciate that. So anyway, if you guys like the video, hit that like button, man, those likes are important as far as the algorithm on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't, and we'll be back soon with another one. See y'all later.